Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because I have a wonderful guest I'd like to introduce to you. Her name is Julie B. Julie is an award-winning entrepreneur, compassionate and empathetic leader, and engaging storyteller. Julie has spoken for 14 and plus years on topics including leadership, management, employee engagement, and morale, workplace culture, small business ownership, and entrepreneurship. Julie's leading insights have been featured on Fast Company, Forbes, Thrive Global, and many more. Her forthcoming book with Matt Holt Books, The Business Owner Guide to Burnout, is scheduled to come and hit the bookstores early in 2024. So, wow, Julie, you have a lot going on for yourself. So why don't you, you know, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and all these great accomplishments that you've been, uh, you know, accomplishing over the course of the years. Sure, Stacy. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. I really uh, enjoy doing these and appreciate being on your sh show. Uh, yeah, so I've been a business owner for a little over 14 years now, and I'm actually, I have, I run two businesses right now. I have a marketing agency and then my speaking and leadership consulting uh, company that you uh, talked about. And I really work with business owners to help them with what I call their VIPs, their very important problems and their very important possibilities to help them basically move their business in, in the direction they want to go in. And I really focus a lot on helping the business owner become a leader of leaders. I think a lot right. of the times us business owners kind of get stuck in this leader of managers role. And it's really yeah. hard to grow your business if you don't bring up other leaders within your business. So right. that's really where I, I focus these days. You know, it's, uh, you know, we need that, I think, more often now, especially nowadays, like a lot of small business owners, I feel either um, they don't know how to properly manage their their business, or they just don't have the leadership qualities within, them, within themselves to actually direct their employees in the right direction. Do you find that also is true? Yeah, and it's usually what I'll, I think a lot of people don't understand is that leadership starts with leading yourself first. It starts with self-leadership and there's a lot of reflection that you, to become a really effective leader, you, you kind of have to really, really, really know yourself well first, know your, the good things and, and the not so great things about yourself, because then that can help you become an effective leader. And that really starts with self-leadership. I, I firmly believe that you kind of have to walk the walk and, you know, you can talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk right. before you can really lead somebody else. And I think that that is something that, you know, you, you, you can't really learn that at a seminar. That's something that you can, you know, pick up nuggets at a seminar, but it's something that you have to practice every day, day in and day out. And, and some days you're better at it than others. And that's also yeah. part of the leadership journey. But then once, once a, an individual kind of gets that figured out, I think that then they can start bringing up other leaders to, you know, help them in their business, whatever it is if they're, even if they're working in a corporation to help manage their team and all of those things. So a lot of, a lot of business owners get stuck though. And if you, if you can't bring along other leaders in your business, what I, I see a lot of business owners deal with is they end up burning out, which yeah. is something that I'm I've experienced several times and I'm also really uh, passionate about it, especially for business owners. And that's kind of what I want to help them not do. I want to help them yeah. avoid burnout. Mm -hmm. I see that all the time. Now, when you mm -hmm. talk about leadership in the beginning and you talk about first in, in order to build leadership, you have to mm -hmm. really, you know, look at your, the, the good things about yourself and the mm -hmm. bad things about yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people have a hard time actually seeing where their faults are. Now, yeah. you know, how do you help somebody where they see where their strengths are, but mm -hmm. it's hard for them to actually come to realization and accept what their faults are, their, their weaknesses are. There are, there's a couple of assessments that I really love to use because that really gives you an objective measure of things. Uh, one of them is called the big five assessment. And a lot of people use this. It basically breaks, breaks an individual down in, in five different characteristics. And that mm -hmm. can, uh, that can really help somebody see, you know, whereas they might be very resilient, maybe some of the things that they you know, maybe they don't have as much tact as that's yeah. actually one of my big things. I'm super <laughs> resilient and I'm very blunt though. So, you know, that's kind of, it is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something to know about yourself yes. so that if you're leading someone, let's say who maybe isn't quite as resilient as you are, 
right. or who maybe expects a little bit more attack, you know, that going in yeah. and that, you know, that about yourself going into that situation. So I really, when it comes to knowing yourself, I really like to lean on assessments because they, they are objective. Right. And you can usually along with assessments, there comes a, a plethora of tools. Another one I really like is um, the strengths finder mm-hmm. assessment, because that really helps you know what your strengths are. Yeah. So it, it will also kind of rank, it ranks, I think, 34 characteristics, one to 34. And, right. you know, number 34 is probably a weakness for you and, yeah. and it helps you kind of know who to surround yourself with. So that's how um, I really like to, to help my clients know themselves a little bit better because that is really objective. You can't, you you really cannot throw those assessments off because so many people have taken them. Mm -hmm. You talk about the five main assessments to Mm -hmm. find out what your your true weaknesses are. What are those actual five assessments that, you know, people have to really focus on? Well, it's, it's one, it's one assessment tool and it's called the big five and it it has five characteristics gotcha. that it ranks you on and it's uh resilience and uh, tact is one of them and um openness is another one and compassion is another one and I'm blanking on the fifth one but there's like five yeah. characteristics mm-hmm. and it digs into each one of those and yeah. there's like sub sub traits for each one of those and that has been consistently uh, every employee I have takes that. Um, in fact, some I have some people that I'm planning on working with, and even if they're not going to become an employee in a very close contractor relationship, I'll have yeah. them take it so that like we know each other before we really start working together. And it's really helped. Um, it brings down walls and it brings down barriers and it, and it helps communication quite a bit. And yes. in terms of leadership, it gets you. It helps you know yourself better. Right. Um, and it's, I just love, love the, um, objectivity of it all. Now I see so many people, like I've known so many businesses over the course of the years. I even work with Ariana Huffington and she even wrote a book about sleep deprivation because she mm-hmm. experienced burnout herself. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, you know, I see it with a lot of people that I know that own businesses and run businesses and manage and, you know, at some point, you know, you work so hard, you're putting so many hours in and you're still not at that point where you want to be, or you're not making enough income, even though you're bringing in the consumers and you're bringing in mm-hmm. the clients, you know, at the end of the day, you're still not where you need to be. And how do you help that person? So they don't reach the burnout. Like if they're not reaching their goals, but mm-hmm. they're burning out. And once you burn out, you can't be productive. So what do you do with that person? Like, how do you help them? So that's really, I would say there's a, that's a two pronged approach. The first Mm -hmm. thing is with the burnout, like you're not going to help anybody and you're not going to make very much money at all if you're burned out. So that, that is the first thing you got to address. And sleep deprivation is a, is a great example of what I call a uh, warning sign or a red flag of burnout. It's something that, you know, we are, it's, it's, a, it's our own behavior. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's not something somebody else outside of us is causing. And, right. and it's one of mine too. And what I really try to get business owners to understand is you don't go from, you know, getting a solid seven or eight hours of sleep every single night or for some of us, nine or 10 hours of sleep every night to getting four hours of sleep a night. You don't go from, you know, that to there's, there is a scale. And the first thing I always ask business owners to do is if if they can, sometimes they can't even do this, but identify what their baseline is. So what is their, you know, normal. And for example, for me with sleep, I know that I need to get about seven, seven and a half an hour, seven and a half hours of sleep during the week. And then I usually get like nine hours of sleep on the weekend. Mm-hmm. If I go for now one or two nights, you know, here and there, that, yeah. that's not a major red flag for me. But if I go about two weeks and I'm outside that normal, yeah, that is a danger zone for me. And I know that I'm heading towards burnout. So yeah. the first thing to, I think, prevent burnout is to understand what burnout looks like for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Have a couple of those things, know why, and also know what normal looks like for you on, right. on those scales so that you can address address it before you get all the way. You might be really stressed out about something, but before stress turns into burnout, maybe you can address it and right. pay more attention to your sleep. So that's the first part of it. Now, the second, the second part of your question, you know, how if you're burning out, 
um, before you're really getting to be profitable or making enough money. I mean, that, those are questions. There's a lot of reasons for that, right? Like sometimes mm -hmm. it might be uh, the business owner is focusing on work that they actually need to not focus on. Sometimes they are procrastinating from doing the thing that's going to make them more money. That happens yeah. a lot. Oh yeah, um, I see that. You know, sometimes they're just not charging enough. You know, sometimes yeah. that happens. Um, sometimes there is some type of financial adjustment that needs to happen, whether it's pricing or, you know, their, their overhead is too high. Sometimes those are all things that can happen. But yeah, in that scenario, like if somebody comes to me in that scenario, we address, we have to address the burnout first because otherwise the business owner is never going to be able to address, you know, whatever the challenge is in their business. So it's, you've got to take care of yourself, especially if you're, um, you know, if the business really relies on, on you, yeah. you've got to take care of yourself because otherwise you're not going to have a business at all. So exactly. burnout first, then we get into the business problem. Now, does everyone have the same symptoms for burnout or is it, uh, is it different for every individual? It's, it is different for every individual. Um, it, you know, sleep there, I mean, there are a few that are common sleep is one that's pretty common. Um, that's something that, that I hear a lot of, um, the other one that I hear a lot of is that they don't want to go to work in the morning. You know, if you're a business owner and you don't want to go to work in the morning, yeah, that's a, pro that's a major that's a problem. problem. Right. So, you know, those are two that I, that I hear uh, quite a bit, but after that, it, it really it varies. I mean, from everything to um, like one of mine is a sign that I'm in burnout is I will cancel doctor's appointments because I think I don't have enough time to go to my, you know, checkup or whatever right. it is, I will literally cancel doctor's appointments. And that is one of my red flags. So it's, it's important for business owners, again, to, to, you don't have to know all of them, but just to know, know a few that, that are signs of burnout that really are your signs of burnout and then pay attention. Um, another one that I, that I do, and that I actually hear other people uh, talk about as well is saying saying something like, I just have to get through fill in the blank this month, this quarter, this big presentation. Yeah. Um, you know, I just have to do this. And then one of my uh, business friends, he calls it the and thens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if you say that a lot, you, you may be approaching burnout and that's, yeah. that's another sign, but it really, it comes down to, there's usually physical symptoms. Um, there's attentional problems, which is you can't form a complete sentence or you, you know, you don't, you have a really hard time focusing and getting anything done. Right. Um, and then there's emotional, which is, you know, you might be more irritable or you might just be completely numb and shut down. Like there, there's a lot of different signs, but they usually fall into those three categories, the physical, um, attentional and emotional burnout. Now, how does a per person suffering from burnout, like what, are, what is the ways that you could actually help that person? Does it, does someone have mm -hmm. to point it out to them? Does the person inside really know that they're burning out? Um, that's, that's a great question, uh, Stacy. And I'll tell you a lot of times it is somebody else, usually the first and second time I would say, especially with business owners, it's someone else pointing out, like, I, I think you might be burned out because yeah. what's interesting is in this community, um, there's a stigma around burnout. There's this, you know, you pick this career path, so you just have yeah. to suck it up and do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we did pick the career path, but I don't believe the, you just have to suck it up and do it part is very helpful, especially no, when people definitely are burnout. not. Yeah. But there's a stigma around business owners saying, you know, I'm burned out because it is, um, I think, you know, no matter where it's coming from yet, yeah, we did pick this path. And, and a lot of us have, I think, been taught or been led to believe that you just kind of have to suck it up. And sometimes you do. I mean, that's business, but yeah, not to the extent that it is, you know, really negatively impacting your health. That's, right. that's where you've got to pay attention and say, okay, I had to have this, you know, emergency surgery or like, yeah. I've heard, you know, I've heard, I've heard heart attacks, strokes, divorces, near divorce, near divorces, yeah. um, it, you know, multiple employees resigning very quickly within right. a short period of time. And what's fascinating is a lot of those times, a lot of that can be tied back to the business owner being burned out. 
Yeah. So it's not just the business owner that's impacted. It's everybody, everybody. around the business owner mm -hmm. <laughs> that's impacted by their burnout. So how does a person, how does a person, what are the first things you do to help a person with burnout? What are the yes. steps? Yeah. So usually what I, the, the very first thing is we have to make some space. And I know that phrase gets thrown around a lot, but it, it's not always about time. Mm -hmm. Space is energy. Space can be a location. Like I've literally worked with business owners where, I, where they said, I can't bear the thought of going into the office every day of the week. Yeah. And I have said, how about you just work from home then on Mondays and Tuesdays? Right. And just that of changing their physical location for a couple of days a week made a yeah. huge impact. So when I say making space, it can mean something along those lines of yeah. making a different physical space. Right. Um, it can mean making space on your calendar, but you, you've got to make space. And the first way you do that, I believe, as you say, you got to say no to anything new. Right. Um, business owners love to chase ra rabbits down rabbit holes and, and shiny objects because, you know, that's part of what makes us successful is yeah. we do see those opportunities and we go after them. But yeah. what, I've, what I've found is that when a business owner is burnt out, they're more likely to be chasing something. And so I will tell them first and foremost, just, you got to say no to new on most, you know, most things that come across your radar. Like if it's an opportunity, you know, it, it'll probably, it'll probably be another opportunity that comes along and you'll be better able to deal with once you're uh, through burnout. There are always outliers to that, but in yeah. general, I preach the, <laughs> just say no to new in this right. moment in time. Mm -hmm. And then also um, look at business initiatives you can pause. So for example, if you decided that you needed to hire a new marketing agency or a new CPA, right? that, that can take a lot of effort depending on the business. Mm -hmm. And that might be something if you've got a CPA or if you got a marketing agency and they're doing okay, yeah, that might be something you put a pause on. That might be an, right. an, an initiative. You just say, eh, we got to hold up one. Yeah. Now, if, if you're moving offices and you're, you know, legally, you have a lease and you're legally obligated to move and you're about 80% of the way through that, then that's something you probably want to go ahead and continue. Yeah. Right. So even that has, has some, you know, if this, then that's, but those are the first two things we do to make space, to help the business owner deal with burnout. We, we say no to new, and then we look at larger business initiatives that can be temporarily paused in order to give the business owner some breathing room, basically. Now, are there, are there times when you look at the person that you're dealing with your client and you see them get into a point where they're destroying their, their life, their health, mm -hmm. people around them, just by the stress that they're enduring. Do you ever suggest to some, somebody that maybe you need to take a step back and maybe you're not in the right business. Maybe you should take your talents and try to do something else because you know, it's not working. Yeah. I've, I've had those conversations. Um, and again, the assessments help a lot with that because, you know, if, if somebody's in, uh, well, I mean, most business owners are required to sell and that can, you know, they're re required to be decent salespeople. And that can be one of those things where we can look yeah. at an assessment and say, you know, maybe it's your, maybe it's the role in your job first. Like, let's look at the role that you have in your job in your right. business first, or there, is there a shift that needs to happen? Does this person need to actually do this other thing and can they, and all of those things. So we can look at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have had conversations with business owners where, you know, they have given it a really good, I would say college try and it, it maybe just isn't the right business for them. Yeah. Um, but what, what I try to do in those scenarios is first of all, you know, normalize it. A lot of us have started businesses that did not, you know, work out right off the bat. Like that's a pretty normal thing in yeah. entrepreneurship. And, and then secondly, like, let's figure out what we can salvage from what you've done, from what mm -hmm. you've built from your network or from whatever it is and kind of parlay that into your next thing. Let's, right. let's look at that and figure that out together if we can. Yeah. And so, you know, business ownership is one of those things that's, I think you uh, business owners are constantly evolving. They're 
really great at kind of always looking for the next thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, sometimes a lot of the times in that situation, the business owner already knows what they want to do next. That's the funny thing is it's almost like they need permission to, to go and do it. And yeah. That reassurance reassurance of, yeah, you can absolutely go and do this for a living. Um, I mean, I've, I've been through a little bit of that on my own where yeah. I really wanted to, you know, and I'm in the process of, of right now transitioning from, you know, being a marketing agency owner to only doing speaking and coaching and consulting with business owners. And, right. you know, I, when I made this transition, I needed reassurance. You know, I, I sought out some of my own coaches yeah. To, to be like, is this, you know, does this, does this make sense to you? And, and, right. you know, of course they were like, yeah, go for it. But sometimes business owners, it's lonely at the top. It's yeah. That's one of the things that causes burnout for business owners is you literally, it, it, even if, and even if you do have a partner, sometimes you are it, there is nobody above you. There's no yeah. HR to go to, to, to fix your problem. There's right. no, you know, you don't, there's, there's nobody above you. You don't have a boss to go to, you know? And so that's yeah. why I think that, um, being that loneliness that a lot of business owners feel at the top causes burnout. And that's why having support networks, having a coach or having, you know, a mastermind group or a networking group that where you, where you feel like you can tell, tell those people almost anything. That's, yeah. that's the key is that you feel like you can be vulnerable with them. Right. That is so important for a business owner to, yeah. to prevent, to prevent burnouts in the future. So it's probably good for someone to reach out and get a business coach, to get a business management coach or a leadership coach to really, you know, mm -hmm. they can actually express how they're feeling, get the stress off their back and mm -hmm. maybe get some good advice as well. Yeah. And Stacy, as you know, I mean, there's, there are multiple types of coaching, you know, yeah. some, sometimes you might need a life coach. Sometimes you need a business coach. Sometimes you might need a leadership coach. There, there are so many different variety varieties of coaches. And I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, having a few that you might go to for different things um, right. as you go through, you know, I have a coach who is, she calls herself a wayfinder, you know, and that like, I would go to her for just yeah. about anything, but she's not going to be the one who digs into my financials with me and helps me figure out something exactly. there, you know? And, right. And so yeah. It's, yeah. it's good to have those. You've got it like building those relationships before you need them, I think is really important as well. I think one of the things I find too, is that I find with business owners, a lot of them try to take the role of doing everything, even though they have people under them, they feel like they're responsible for everything and that it's not going to get done unless they're there or they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, on top of everybody when, mm -hmm. you know, they just, you know, they are afraid to take a step back, you know, yeah. how do you help that person who feels like they need to, even though they have people working for them and they are, they are good leaders, they mm -hmm. feel like they can't let go. It's their baby. They have to be there. They have to make sure everything's supervised properly. But by doing that, they're burning themselves out. And it's, it's, it's funny because I micromanaging is something that I look for um, that tells me a business owner might be burned out when they are, when they feel like they have to be in everything. And usually the way that I kind of help a business owner back out of that, that is yeah. first of all, drawing attention to it and saying, you know, this is, this is micromanaging and, you know, just naming it. I think sometimes just the awareness that they're doing it, right. Sometimes they don't know they're doing it. Yeah. Um, and then the kind of the step back from that is they see the impact their micromanaging has on the people and right. they want to keep their best people. And micromanaging is the easiest way to get your best people to quit basically. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the easiest <laughs> ways. So what I, but when, when I'm dealing with a business owner who struggles with that, um, once we kind of get back to a, a stable, you know, more stable place, what I help them do a lot of the times is set up guardrails um, because you, your people are going to make mistakes. Yeah. And the, the only way a business owner can have comfort with that is knowing that they're not going to make, you know, they may, they may run into the guardrail, but they're not going to drive the car off the ravine and into the yeah. water. Like, it's not going to be like, if you set up guard, help your people set up guardrails mm -hmm. so they know how far they can go and, and guardrails can be, you know, a budget or, you know, you can spend X number of hours a week on this project or, 
you know, helping them reprioritize, well, this, this, I know these were our priorities last week, but this opportunity has come up. So I want that to go to the top of your priority list. And I understand business owner understands that that means there maybe are a couple of things that aren't going to get done this week. Right. Um, just helping, helping the business owner find comfort with, you know, that the, their people aren't going to do everything exactly the way that they would do them, but they're going to be within the boundaries and within guardrails that the business owner is comfortable with us. That's, that's how we uh, help business owners kind of let go of some of that micromanaging tendency. Right. Like, you know, in, in the last two and a half years with COVID, it not kind of knocked businesses down so badly. You had so many businesses closing up and businesses that were able to survive aren't doing as well, even though it's been two and a half years they're, and they're trying to build up the loss that they incurred, you know, from the last two and a half years that they, they've gone through. Like, how do you help those people? Because those people are experiencing burnout because they're, they're trying to do it, you know, they're trying to just just like double time it, you know, they want to, they want to get back to where they were and that, you know, they're obviously mm -hmm. not. So how do you help someone like that? I, you know, in that situation, I think the first thing that, that we have to do is kind of look at what, what is sustainable? Are you trying to get back to something that doesn't exist anymore? Right. You know, are you, are you trying to get yourself back to an operational standpoint? For example, before COVID, a lot of restaurants did not offer any meal delivery. No. So now I, if a restaurant is trying to get back to that, is that, is that sustainable now for some probably like high end restaurants, but for most restaurants, there is now an expectation that you can get your food, the, that a consumer can get their food delivered to their door. Yeah. So trying to back out of that is, is nearly, I mean, I, I would say that's almost impossible at this point for most, for most restaurants. So, yeah. you know, if, a, if there was a business owner in that scenario, um, I would, first of all, just a reality check of, is this what you're trying to get back to sustainable? Yeah. Was it sustainable to begin with? Were you already working? Was what you were doing pre COVID sustainable in the first place? You know, yeah. were you working 80 hours a week and now you're trying to work a hundred hours a week? Right. To get back there. So there's a sustainability uh, issue with, with some of those scenarios. So that's the first thing we have to look at. And then it's, okay, so it is sustainable. We want to get back to this. You're working too much. Again, it comes back to where can we make space so that you don't get burned out? Where are there any margins available in your calendar? And even though, you know, even though most people feel like there aren't, there usually are some yeah. places where we can find um, pockets of time. And if, if we can't find pockets of time, it's almost like, okay, well then what can you sit down and do all at once for a month and then get it off your plate instead of doing an, an hour here, an hour there, you know, right. and yeah. thinking about it. So that's another, another way that we look at it. And then sometimes, um, the mental weight of making decisions is another thing that I see business owners really struggle with and that can lead to burnout. Yeah. I see that. And so sometimes just making a decision and moving forward with it is, is what business owners really need help with. And right. you know, I help them with that. I have a background in accounting and marketing, and now, you know, I'm a leadership coach and I, I've got a, a pretty uh, broad experience from a resume perspective. So, yeah. you know, I can really help them kind of think through a lot of different avenues and just make a decision and then move forward with it. I think right. that helps those individuals a lot because, you know, some of, some of them have been stuck for, you know, two and a half years trying to think through making a decision, buying right. a new location, closing a location. Yeah. And those are things that I've talked to business owners about. And sometimes they just need that third party coach, you know, mentor, call it what you want to call it, consultant. Right. They need that person from the outside looking in and saying, okay, let's talk about it. What do you really want to do? Here's what I see. Let's talk about some more. Let's make a decision and right. move forward with the decision. Now, if you had to give somebody some tips on how to prevent burnout and then what, you know, uh, what would you actually tell them, you know, a business owner that has a lot on their plate? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is revisit some of your past burnout stories. So go because your past is one of your best teachers. And I know, yes. you know, we spend a lot of time talking about being in the present, but looking back at your past is, is one of your best teachers. 
So the first thing I have them do is kind of go back through and look at their past and not, not every single burnout or every single challenging time, but look at a couple of those past times and then identify what were some warning signs that burnout was coming. So then we go back to, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I was canceling doctor's appointments. I was, you know, forgetting to email a client. I was you know, forgetting to pick my kid up at school. Like there's a lot of these things that I've heard. Yes. So the second step is what, again, what does burnout look like for you? What are the warning signs? And then, then what I have them do is I have them say, okay, this is baseline. This is normal. I'm picking my kid up from school three days a week. And then burnout is I've forgotten my kids, you know, every day for a week or two, something like that. So that's <laughs> burnout, right? Or I've, yeah. forgot, or I've forgotten them at all, you know? Yeah. Um, somewhere in between there, you might do it once or you might run really late one day. Yeah. That is when you got to start paying attention because you've, you've kind of moved off your normal or your baseline and you're now in that danger zone of burnout. Right. So being aware of that kind of thing is really what can help business owners prevent burnout. And then, you know, having a plan for turning that around, having, right. you know, having a plan for at, who would you ask for help before you need to ask them? Yeah. You know, knowing who those people are before you need to ask them. Yeah. Um, you know, just having those, those plans of how would I turn this around? Or, you know, if I'm not sleeping well, I go to, I, I start getting ready for bed an hour earlier, you know, right. those types of things you want to have those. It's like having a banker in place before you need them. Yeah. You want to have your prevention plan in place before you need it. And exactly. so just knowing what it looks like for you is really very, very important to preventing burnout in the first place. That's an excellent point is that you should always have a plan. Really think about, you know, if you have a business and you, you are a leader or you are trying to teach people to be leaders and you are getting overwhelmed of all the responsibility in your business, you should have a plan, a prevention plan before the actual burnout occurs. So be aware of the symptoms so you can know when you actually are falling into it and then have a plan so you can prevent it. So it doesn't get to the point where you're actually falling into a hole and it's too deep right now for you to get out all by yourself. Yeah. And then from there, you know, usually it's designing, you know, what do you want your ideal day to look like both from, you know, the personal side and the, the business side, because right. that's another thing that I think the term work-life balance for business yes. owners is... <laughs> That's a hard thing because yeah, it is. I, it's so intertwined. Our businesses yeah. and our personal lives are so intertwined. And I think accepting that and then understanding like how you want those yeah. parts of your lives to look, that is just accepting that it's intertwined can help business owners, you know, stop feeling guilty about trying to find that balance all the time and, and being so rigid about it. Um, because there are weekends you're going to work, you know, but, yeah. you know, maybe one of your boundaries, your absolute do not cross boundaries is you don't work when you're on vacation. Right. You know, yeah. so knowing what you want those to look like, but also understanding that it's more about finding harmony between the two yes. and constantly juggling and feeling this need to be like 50, 50 all the time. I think it's more about finding the harmony that between the two than it is about balancing. Uh, okay. Everything. So, you know, you can't really say, okay, I'm only going to work eight hours. I'm only going to work nine hours or whatever the case may be when you're a business owner. It's not always going to be like that. So it's, it's a waste of time to really to try to plan it like that. But, you know, in your head or on paper, try to figure out something that's going to be a balance. So you have enough of time to be with your family. You have enough of quality time to renew yourself, you know, figure out a, like a plan where you could have, like you said, a little bit of everything. And I think it's, it's when we start de defining our life by hours, that's where it gets really kind of sticky. It, it gets hard yeah. to do that. For me, it's what I recommend is um, business owners define more of their life by action. So, you know, I want, let's say you have um, a, a child that plays a sport. Yeah. You want to be at, you know, 75% of their games. Okay. Right. That's not an hours thing. That's a hard number that you can figure out and then yeah. get it on your schedule, you know? Or if it's work, you know, it might be like, I'm going to, on Mondays, I'm really good at, I'm going to do this one thing until it's done. 
And yeah. if I work 12 hours, then I work 12 hours, but it's going to balance out the other part of the week. So I think it's defining, defining things by hours, defining action by hours is, is really tough for business yeah. owners. So I think it's more about the actions that you want to take and the skills you want to learn and the hobbies you want to have and, and saying that I'm going to do that, you know, a certain number of times a month is, right. is much easier than saying I'm going to work, you know, 50 hours a week and spend, you know, X number of hours with my kids. Cause I just, that's not, I don't think that that's sustainable week to week because things change so much for business yes. owners week to week. I agree with you. Definitely. Now tell me about this awesome book that's coming out. I want to hear more about it. Now, now tell everybody the title. Yeah. So the title is the business owner's guide to burnout and it will be out in 2024. Pre-sales will start in 2023. So we're super excited about that. But, you know, it, I, this came out of my own experience with burnout mm -hmm. and talking to business owners. I, I literally, every business owner I've talked to has told me a story, at least one story about their own burnout. And um, in the summer of 2021, I actually went through a pretty significant burnout. And when I looked for resources for business owners, yeah, I couldn't find them. They were all about employee burnout or, you know, uh, lawyer or professional or medical burnout, which that right. made total sense at the time. Yeah. There was not a resource. And so I, you know, I, I have these steps th that I've worked in the past and I just yeah. finally put them all together into a system. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote a book. And so this book is basically, it's a system that helps business owners go from everything to making, making space to creating a burnout prevention plan to actually leveraging their burnout that they experience into, you know, one of their, a, a new opportunity. And um, I'm really excited about it because it's, it's a much needed resource. It, yes. There isn't a resource out there that's going to be all in one you know, one, one place and one book. And yeah, I'm really excited to help business owners with their burnout. And, you know, it's, it's true. You don't really see many articles or information about business owners having burnout. Most of the time it's geared more towards the employees than anything else. That's yeah. what I see. Which is, which is valid and needed. Yes. Um, what I, what, I kind of laugh about that a little bit because often when your employees are burned out, it's because the business owners burned out. If we deal with the source, you know, maybe the source, the get to the gut, be root out. source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a funny thing that, um, that I, that I often see. And yeah, if you think you're dealing with your own burnout is bad when you're dealing with your burnout, when your behaviors have caused your employees to burn out, that's a totally right. different, that's, and I've seen it and I've worked with business owners through that, but that's a totally different ball of wax. So if you can deal with your own first, you yeah. know, have it in there, that's, that's the most ideal. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this book going to be global? Like, is it distributed, you know, globally? So they yeah. can get it everywhere basically. Yeah. So what's really cool is, um, my publisher is actually, they're the same publishing house that published Traction, which is a really popular uh, business ownership book by Gina Wickman. And um, the, the, and the publisher under that is interesting how the whole publishing world works. But anyways, Matt Holt has been involved with projects like the E-Myth. He got that one out. Um, he's just had like a lot of New York Times bestselling books. And yeah. so he, he really knows what he's doing as well. So I'm really excited to have him to be on his team and, you know, yeah. has to be partnered up. So yeah, it'll be available everywhere online, Amazon bookstores, uh, on all of the inner, all of the websites and yeah, you'll be able to get it pretty much. There's going to, there'll be an audio book as well. So pretty much however you want to consume this book, when it comes out, you'll be able to get it. Now, is this your first book? Have you written books previously? You know, <laughs> I laugh because I say I've written like 10 books. Um, but this is, yeah, this is my first official uh, published book. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Book. Yes. Thank you. I'm very I exciting. Am, I am so excited. Um, landing a, uh, getting a book contract on, on my first book was a huge, uh, confidence booster, but also yeah. just, you know, just, I think it just speaks to the need for this clearly, um, Matt and, and, uh, Ben Bella saw the need for this book as well. Yeah. And um, I'm just, I'm, I am really excited to help business owners because I, I have had so many conversations um, 
to the point one, one person I talked to recently said to me, you know, I don't really know when I've ever not been burned out Yeah, as a business owner. It's, it's a serious problem. Business owners are so crucial to the economy and in, in general, and not, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into yeah. a lot about that, but I mean, small businesses employ most of the uh, workforce in, in the United States. Um, right. And it's, you know, I just, we got to take care of them and we got to get over. I think there's a stigma around business owners, yeah. feeling, like not being able to talk about their burnout. And right. um, I don't know, we got to take care of our business owners because they, yeah. they are really, um, you know, they're the main employer employers of the economy and they, you know, they, they also put a lot back into the community. Yeah. I just, yeah. So obviously I'm a business owner and I, you know, I have a big heart for, for other business owners, but yeah. when you look at it kind of on the bigger scale of, of the country and really the world, they're, they're so important and vital. And, um, I just think it's important to try to help them not burn out so that they yeah. can continue doing the good work that they do. And I think too, our society, um, tries to give like a stigmatism where business owners have to be strong. They have to be tough. You know, Mm -hmm. they have to be resilient to these things and, you know, they can't, you know, show weakness, you know, and even that, you know, a lot of the older generation, we were taught not to show weakness. So then they're, they're feeling burnt out, but in their head, in society, the way they were brought up, all these things, they think they have to suck it up and they can't really, you know, show anybody what they're going through. They got to fake it till they make it. That's, yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's a perfect saying. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's a time for that. There, there's a time and a place for that. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to go around to every networking event, and, you know, saying like, oh yeah, business sucks right now. <laughs> or like, Ugh, I'm dealing with this really crappy thing. Yeah. But you, you do business owners do need at least one other person that they yes. can be really real with, whether it's, and I would, I suggest it not be their significant other spouse, right. you know, whether that's you a need coach, an outside source, you need someone yeah, an with an unbiased, source. um, you know, opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it can come in a lot of forms. Um, there's a lot of great programs available to business owners out there. Um, and it can also be through coaching. I mean, I'm even, you know, I'm a big proponent of therapy. I think sometimes it's, it's a therapist that a yeah. business owner needs, you know? Oh, definitely. Um, so, but I think again, it has to be okay. Like the business owner, it has to be okay for the business owner to not be okay somewhere. Right. They need that somewhere because it, business ownership is hard. It is a hard job. Yes. And Yes, we all chose it. Uh, most of us chose it for ourselves and it is still a very hard job. It is. So I think the more, um, I think the more recognition and awareness around that, that we can, yeah. we can get out there, the more okay other business owners will feel about talking about, you know, being vulnerable with uh, yeah. someone about the stress they have. Yeah. And let's not forget 70% of stress causes illness. So when you're under all this stress and you're not, you're not getting help and you're not reaching out Mm -hmm. like, like we said before, it could affect your health and it could affect your, your mental health, physical health, everything. All of it. Yeah. I, um, I did a, I interviewed a business owner who said she knew she was burnt out because her right arm didn't work for two and a half years. Wow. And she finally figured out like all of these doctors could not figure out what it was. It was stress, stress, burnout. I believe it. I believe it. And it's crazy. Like sometimes it takes you that long to figure it out. And that again is why I'm like, yeah, when you're stress can cause that kind of stuff in your body. Like it can legitimately burnout can cause all of that. Yes, it definitely Um, can. It's a legitimate physical health problem and yeah. mental health problem if you don't take care of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, hundred percent. Now your website, can you tell everybody your website? Yeah. My website is the julieb.com. And my last name is spelled B as in boy, E E like a bumblebee. So can, <laughs> that's my real name. But yeah. It's the julieb.com. And you can find all kinds of resources there. And I have a podcast called they don't teach this in business school. So that's also on, on the website as well. Now, do you do it monthly or daily or weekly, your podcast? Uh, My podcast is weekly um, and it's a mix of interviews similar to this one. And then really short kind of, I would say six to 10 minute episodes where I'm just talking about one idea and probably tell a little story of my own. And then it's just a short 
short episodes. So it's usually every other week I do an, an interview and then in between those, it's, it's one of my shorter episodes. Oh, very cool. And they yeah. can find all that information and they can get the link to listen to all your uh, podcasts on your website. Yep. They can get it, get it at thejuliebee.com and my social handles are on there as well. So you can Excellent. find pretty much anything you want to find out about me is on that website. <laughs> and do you provide also um, a blog? Maybe they can read some articles, get some information and stuff. Yep. There's a blog on there as well. And I'm trying to think of what else is on there. Yeah. And, uh, anything about my services um, is on there. How you can book me as a speaker is on there as well. So Excellent. yeah, the website is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about this. This is a topic we really need to talk about because especially now, you know, business owners are going through a lot of stress for many different reasons. And even before COVID, you know, business, it's a lot of work to be a business owner. You're, you're putting, you're holding up, you know, the fort. And if you don't know how to, you know, you know, properly, you know, distribute your leadership qualities. And if you don't know how to teach others to be leaders, you know, beneath you, a lot of things could happen, you know, and, you know, that's how failure with businesses occur. That's how stress occurs, you know, health problems, you name it, you know, you need to have a, you know, a, a plan. Like you said, you need to have, you need to know, you know, the symptoms and you need to have a prevention plan and you need to understand how to properly distribute uh, leadership and, mm -hmm. and also prevent burnout. So this is great. Yeah. I'm so glad you came onto the show and you've been a wonderful guest and thank you so much. And is there anything you'd like to tell the audience before we go? Is there anything? I I don't think so. I think you just wrapped it up there, but I, I would just say, you know, just, you know, take care of yourself. If you're a business owner, really anybody just that, you know, burnout affects pretty much everyone. Um, so just, just know, know the signs, have a plan and uh, lean into your support network. Definitely make sure you have that. I think that's really crucial and, and pretty much every scenario. So that's a great you know, that's a great closing line. Yeah, I, I think that's excellent advice. You know, I, once again, thank you, Julie, for being on the show. And I hope to, you know, see you soon come back maybe as a guest later on. And, you know, I wish you the best of luck with your book. Congratulations. Thanks, Stacy. You have a great day. You too.